Welcome to Shh, the Talk Show Season 3. If you believe in the conversations we are trying to create here, please subscribe to our channels as that will help us get more reach. Uh, if you watch the YouTube pre-roll ads before this episode in completion, that also helps us to make a little bit of money that help us to go a long way. Our show is now available in three languages, so you can click on your subtitle of choice, uh, whether it's Sinhala, Tamil or English. You can follow this conversation wherever you are in Sri Lanka. And uh, we also welcome you to continue these taboo conversations with us on our social media, which is Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And also our blog posts coming out and our articles in the Sunday morning newspaper. Enjoy the show. Today we are in a really pretty place that none of us had an idea about until we got here and we are blown away. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful private villa in Panipitiya, it's in Talavatu Goda and it's called Hailsham Bungalow. They actually reached out to us and said, would you like to come and shoot at our location? And if you come here, you'd see just how spectacular this place is. It's so private. It's in the city close enough to everything and yet you feel like you've gone on this retreat I'm, I'm just blown away by how beautiful it is so thank you thank you Hersham for letting us use the place this is Wilbur okay and all my friends and family know that this is Wilbur so now you the public all over the world also know uh, Wilbur is not only my pot tummy but Wilbur is also a casing for a lot of problems that go on underneath so Wilbur holds a lot of secrets and I like many other women and girls around Sri Lanka took very little interest or paid very little attention to what might be happening inside my womb until I absolutely had to until I was debilitated in pain and had issues with my period and um, had like various complications that I was feeling and that's the problem that we have because when it comes to our uh, feminine health when it comes to our uh, say our, our insides our lady bits and our wombs unless we are trying to get pregnant or we have like a urine infection or we contract an SDI or something like that we don't go to a gynecologist, we don't get ourselves checked up, we don't take care of ourselves and then therefore we are also very, very ignorant of very real and pervasive problems that we women face in this country and ar around the world. And one of those problems that has come into the forefront lately that uh, uh, many more women are talking about today than they were but we still don't know a lot about is endometriosis endometriosis, polycystic ovaries, uh, issues related to our fertility and our reproductive health. So thank you very much to Kavita and to Samantha, uh, both who, by the way, have been through their own uh, challenges with their reproductive health. And funnily enough, the first time I heard about a friend of mine having endometriosis and all that was when you and I had a chat. I think yes, yes. after dinner, we went out for yeah. dinner once and after that we were talking about yeah. it on the road. This is what we talk about. This, we've got road. to this <laughs> stage where the aunties stand on the road and we talk about <laughs> womb issues. <laughs> and then of course, um, you I know you had surgery some time ago, but I didn't, I wasn't completely clear on what it was for. So I'm like the, the full option one, okay? <laughs> Endometriosis, check. Polycystic ovaries, check. Adenomyosis, check. Fibroids, check. Got it all. Uh, and had to finally have the, the full option removal also. Okay. And like you said, Shanaki, Shanaki, the background just went on forever and you didn't know you had no idea what was going on it's only i think when we were in our late early 30s i heard this word endometriosis a close friend and i was too embarrassed to ask what is that because mm. it was like she had a really hard time and then when i got married and two years three years and no signs of conceiving then i went to check things out that's when I discovered that 
Um, by then, one of my ovaries was pretty much ruined. The other one was semi-functional and my womb was described as something like a hostile environment or an right. inhospitable environment. Mm. That's when I started to learn. Luckily for me, so I mean, you didn't have any sort of uh, I had the pain signs or I had pain okay. and, and we are taught that period pain is normal and that's mm. the big mm. big big myth because when I went to do my scans at this clinic the lady who was doing it she and that stuck in my head forever she said period pain unless it's beyond unless it's just discomfort is not normal now I'm, I'm a teacher and I keep telling all my students if you have you know because I remember friends who used to faint because their periods were so bad and so on but then by the time I went I was like 38 it was too late mm. so immediately it was injections take this take that pills uh, on the pill for so about 10 years. This was years. to try and become, uh, to try and conceive, is it? No, uh, before the conception, they had to just try and stop this spread of things. So mm -hmm. finally, I actually had two operations because the first time I went in, at least the doctor went in, they had to close up fast because I was bleeding so much they couldn't mm -hmm. finish. Mm -hmm. So laparoscopy and whatever, a couple of years. So then they just gave me things to stop the menstruation because like your mom at one point it was just continuous. never ending continuous yeah. continuous I mean you can imagine you know newly married I was in a position in my career where I was aiming for the highest spot that I had aspired to all of this you're working your you know rear end off and all of that and then comes this but the second time around you know uh, Professor Hemanta Sen and I actually said look Let's just, you know, um, take, it take it all out. Were you at in risk of something if you didn't? Yeah, there, there is. So the, here's the thing. If you leave it be, because by that time, the pain was bad. I was having back aches. I was having shooting pains down my leg. That's yes. when I thought, no, nah, it's not worth it. And, and the constant mm. continuous bleeding. And that was yeah. just not funny. So it's so interesting listening to Sam because there's so many similarities. Yeah. I think the earliest probable uh, memory that I have is uh, being in school with like my group of friends around me in the girls' washroom. I went to a co-ed and, um, and just being in extraordinary pain and Suddenly, just, out of, just out of the blue, just okay. out of the blue and having to so you know you'd have the sick room and mm. then you'd want to go to the sick room to lie down because the pain and just like you said again Sam it starts here and it went up to my toes it was so bad and so and the nurse is like ah you know what's that you know just you know go and survive in your whatever class yeah I, I think that happens and we've talked about that as well because uh, period pains everybody thinks period pains are normal like you said yeah. and then uh, when you can't sort of, uh, when you can't endure it, they think you're being a drama queen. Exactly. Right? Or you're trying to skip class because yeah. you're like, how do you verbalize my feet are hurting, my legs are hurting. Yeah. I don't understand what's happening to me. Yeah. I must have been about 14 or 15. Okay, that, mm. that young. And so, you know, you just kind of learn to deal with it. You start working, you know, lectures through uni and all of that. And then it was, I think, 2010. So I was in my early 20s. Um, and it just, I was, I was standing in front of a group of students teaching. And the pain just, I just couldn't so stand this is like it. So during your period, before period? It was, it was like, like just before periods. That's okay, what I used okay. to notice. It right. used to come like, let's say I had periods for about mm -hmm. a week. It used to just like... A week before, perhaps, yeah. or mm. five days before, like a precursor, just suddenly set in. And what do you do? Like you know, and some, sometimes I was just like, maybe I should go and just sit in the loo for a while, you know, wondering mm, what, what this is happen. all about. Yeah. And I just remembered, so there were episodes like that over perhaps two years. Uh, the worst at that time was where I collapsed in, mm. like it was bad. I had a blackout because it was wow. so bad, and. I still remember, so it's been three doctors. Uh, the first doctor I went to, I didn't tell anyone at home. Mm. I told no one. I just went because I was freaking out. 
I knew it was probably something to do with mm. the system. Mm. I just didn't know what. Mm. And I went in and there by myself and you know it's so weird when you walk in and everyone is like Miss Namukadda and I'm like Kavita. Oh, Mrs. and I'm like So that was so the first time I went it was to a female doctor. Okay. Um when the scans came out it was um retroverted uterus. Oh. Uh-huh. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's almost like we want a high five yeah. over oh, each yeah. yeah. What is this? I had so introverted retroflex. I can't oh even imagine. Oh my gosh. What? what? Yeah. Yeah. What does that even mean? I think it's like inside upside out, down, upside down or divided. Okay. Oh. And then yeah, and then then the polycystic ovaries. So the first doctor said endometriosis. The second doctor that I went to was again after an episode of collapsing this time I was in front of a group of trainees mm-hmm. um oh, yeah. adult trainees it was a 5 hour training program and um and I just I just blacked out mm-hmm. that was the second time and in between I had had I had gone for regular scans 6 month scans every every 6 months uh, and this initial doctor was like ah oh, you have a little growth um it will get better that was doctor number 1 female doctor and i was like oh, okay cool <laughs> you know it will get better um it didn't get better you were on something i mean taking i was things. on well it was every time the scan came out it was like um okay let's try this so the first okay. try was a, a tablet this, this, this. um that was supposed to thin the flow of blood mm, mm. a tiny little bottle it thin the flow of blood and i bled for like 30 to 45 days at a stretch now like what do you say to people at work right yeah um anyway so that was the first one and then subsequently um when when uh, things got really bad it was again a fibroid it was a second doctor who told me why did you it was an emergency because i had collapsed and it rushed to get an mri and all this drama and uh, the doctor was like why did you wait i said because the other doctor said it will get better mm. i haven't told you what she said afterwards she said it will get better when you get married and have children ah mm. yep that That's was the so line well. and the fibroid doesn't stay small so basically don't treat her because my god let's not hamper her child bearing ah. abilities oh That's it. it's insane and the kind of questions that you get asked <laughs> when you are by yourself and going to a radiologist who is also female mm. oh, yeah interesting times interesting yeah, times yeah. so when the fibroid finally you know had to come out it was grapefruit sized um they were freaked out because of the size of the you know um the growth and um, it was too big to do a laparoscopy it was a cesarean cut or a fan and steel Uh, cut. Okay, what is endometriosis? Let's start there. We Endo is when two teachers are yes. by the way, so this is a good one. <laughs> That's yeah. the white board. Okay, yeah. <laughs> when you finish your period, the inner lining of the womb is supposed to tear out and just get out of the body. Mm. Well, guess what? It doesn't go. It just gets out of your womb, but then ends up going to all sorts of other places. And then it just So like they say patita venava it doesn't mm. exit uh-huh. right with the rest of your yeah. uh, menstrual flow the bits and pieces go and then get stuck here there and everywhere okay including around the ovaries so then there is clots of hardening blood and then every time you have your periods there's more and more and more and it just starts making so it's the like cysts. a thicker wall yeah, yeah. so no 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 bits no. and pieces could be everywhere okay So that's why they are called chocolate cysts yeah. sometimes. People don't know endometriosis. Sometimes you say chocolate cysts, they know. Mm. Yeah. Right? But then um that's one. The adenomyosis is the womb's muscle wall instead of the uterus lining going out, it goes and adheres to mm. the muscle wall. Mm. So then that starts thickening, thickening. So that's sort of the cousin like you said. The, cousin, yeah. the fibroids on on their own. So, so the polycystic is, is yeah. Okay so PCOS expands to polycystic ovarian syndrome um and for the longest time I just thought that PCOS endometriosis and its cousin and adenomyosis were all not linked to each other Ooh. so the entire flow of the monthly system is controlled by hormones mm. right 
Um, so, for example, in all in any body, whether male or female, you have both the male hormone and the female hormone. With individuals who have PCOS particularly, there is an imbalance or a percentage uh, increase in the male hormone as opposed to how it's supposed to be mm -hmm. in the average female. So, what happens is a lot of side uh, side or related things. But essentially, the, so you have your ovary, sorry, lack of a whiteboard, uh, so you have your ovary, right? And then you have your womb, and then what happens is every, uh, your ovary is, and your womb are there to ensure that you conceive, right? So the ovaries have the eggs, the womb is there like the little cushiony mattress. Every month, uh, an egg gets released from the ovary, yeah. and is supposed to come and land on cushiony mattress, and get fertilized. If it doesn't, then bye bye cushiony mattress, hello pain, and Period. welcome to periods, right? Um, with PCOS, uh, because of the imbalance, so even that release of the egg is triggered by a hormone. Mm. The eggs don't get released, okay. it gets like pussified mm. because it's just inside there. And as a result, because it doesn't get released, it creates a lot of space issues, etc., etc. And as a, uh, as a side effect, within the ovary itself, there are hormones being released. So those give rise to, let's say you have excessive male hormone, it's going to give you, for example, um, excessive hair growth, mm. male pattern hair growth. Uh, it would give you things like baldness, mm. male pattern baldness. So it's, it's a lot of hormonal activity. And because the egg isn't getting released, your lining is also confused. Mm. So that's also another hormone that triggers, okay, there's no fertilization happening, let's have the lining go out. So it's a lot of different things. It also therefore means that your skin is reacting to mm. the different changes inside that little tiny area. And so you end up with things like polycystic related acne. Mm. And yeah. So I am your a stereotypical ostrich with the head in the sand, <laughs> right? So my story is the fact that um, I I had sort of, I'm someone with a very high pain threshold, right? Okay. So even period pains and all that mm -hmm. never, yeah. it is period Easy. pains, yeah. yeah, you know, and could manage, didn't have the whole I can't function kind mm. of thing that a mm. lot of my friends had. So I thought I was like, fine. Uh, but then later on, I think in my 20s, towards my later 20s, I started feeling more uncomfortable right. than usual. And uh, I, I went and actually I went for some other reason. I can't, I think it was because my stomach was big and my mother constantly tells me that I'm growing something in there, right? I think she was more worried about the fact that it might be a uh, pregnancy or something like that. But <laughs> this constant thing of poke, 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 there's something in your stomach, there's something okay. in your stomach, go and get it checked out, go and get it checked out. So I did, just to shut her up, um, I went to a gynecologist at a leading hospital um, and someone who came with a list of recommendations, uh, went and uh, she told me to get a scan um, and then I did that scan at that time uh, and that was a from the outside, outside okay an outside scan right so did that and then what she said was uh, there are fibroids there's a small fibroid it right. was like a four millimeter or something small fibroid and then she told me don't worry me once you have babies and all that everything will go away told me that and of course uh, advised me to get married and have children very quickly, very quickly. Yes. also yes. yes because you know these fibroids and all and told me don't worry nothing we have it will, it will just like stay it's not i don't know there was no biopsy or anything like that even suggested they will say so i was like huh fine okay i named my fibroid because i have a tendency to develop like emotional attachments <laughs> to my body parts so this was phibius right? <laughs> and phibius is now famous uh, so Phoebeus and I, inside Wilbur, coexisted. I started talking about Phoebeus to my mother. She has a lot to say about it. <laughs> you know, and I drives her up the wall, I think. But Phoebeus and I were very happy. Okay. Recently, maybe about four years ago, again I started having much hmm. bigger pains, right? Where you know the uh, the lower back, back. and oh, yes. pains that I had not never had before. One hmm. week before the period starts, hmm. yeah. Um, and then I 
I started actually, I developed an inability to uh, poo and pee at one oh, time. Like one before, it, where everything feels like blocked and you yeah. you want to pee. It's crazy on how the just like <laughs> nothing's coming yeah. out, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but here's the thing, you two have addressed this issue. I haven't addressed mm. it. So, then I went back because again, my mother was like, poke, 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 something's wrong. Yes. You're, you've got a cancer, this, that and the other. Uh, and I think just to appease her, again, went to a different doctor. Okay. Uh, in another leading hospital, that one, one examination, not even the examination, did this, poked on my stomach uh, and then just held a light and said, my God, they immediately go and get a, uh, internet, a, uh, what, what internet you call scan, the TBS, yeah. the yeah. TBS, TBS, whatever, whatever yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I have to tell you about what happened to me there, leading hospital went for the scan, decided to go on my own because I don't need to get my mother involved in this. <laughs> That's more drama than I can handle. <laughs> went there alone, made the appointment, went for the scan. The technician um, asked me Mahatyako because I was going in for a womb scan, a uterus scan, right? Ko Mahatya. I said, Mahatya, marry karlanad. Not scanned or anything yet. I have just come with a doctor's uh, yeah. uh, letter to get a to get my scan. uterus scan. I am not married. Immediately, three women in that room go silent, start looking at me oh like... Oh my gosh, wow. And these, these, you know, assumptions, and you can read the room, right? You, you know. You know it's, it's, like, it's like your womb is your husband's property, no, not ours no, to talk but about. It was like this, this immediate assumption that slut. <laughs> Pregnant without <laughs> marriage, for oh sure, gosh. right? Then she takes out this rod-like device, yeah. right? Whatever this thing that looks like a dildo, <laughs> gets me to lie down and say, tells me to part my legs. And now I am looking at that thing and freaking out. And I said, "Okay, read the other," right? Because she was trying to poke it at me, right? She said, "I said, okay, read the other." And she told me basically in those very words, "Nothing you haven't felt before." <gasps> I just, and here I am with my legs up here, three women in this oh room and I'm, I'm thinking if I have a heart attack because of blood pressure right now, I'm going to sue this hospital. I just kept my mouth shut because oh she gosh. had all the power. Yes. She was still wielding that wand, right? I didn't want it her to like injury me. Oh my but gosh. she did it. And then she put that thing in and then only on the mm -hmm. scan and all, it showed that this four millimeter phobias was now two, uh, one was eight centimeters which is basically grapefruit, grapefruit size and yeah. then there was a second one which was five centimeters so basically now uh Bilba has reproduced <laughs> and multiplied uh so now i have phibias and filibert <laughs> <laughs> i've been like you know doctor number one this is um told to go and get a scan by myself and i'm there Question comes, Mahatya ko, and I'm like, um, I don't know how to answer this question. Mahatya ne, <laughs> right? And then the question came because you said, you know, that whole reading the room and you get that. She actually said, So, what is your job? Oh my gosh. Mm. Mm. Oh ah. my gosh, Kavita. She asked me that question. Seriously. And yeah. so I'm like, they are thinking, uh, I work as a teacher and an HR professional. What is she implying? But like you said, she has this device in her hand. You need to get the scan. You need to get the report. You need to know what's going it's on inside your body. No sensitivity as well as we are not. No, what is that morality also? Yeah, but it's also like this is what I want to talk about. As it is, girls don't go to gy gynecologists. We don't get exams. Uh, I'm one of them, right? Until you absolutely have, have to. to yeah, yeah, obviously. We don't yeah. get ourselves oh my gosh, checked no. up like yeah. medical health check, no. pap smears, nothing. Yeah, the first time I right. went for a pap smear, it was like, Ooh. but, who but does because that? I had to, because I yeah. had to, they wanted a yeah. full medical checkup to go abroad, mm -hmm. so I had to, no yeah. choice. Yeah. 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 But we are never told anything like this. Exactly. Shanti, and these right? conversations don't happen don't in happen. the homes. Don't right? happen. And they don't even happen because I'm in so the school? glad that you said, you know, you speak school? to your students about yeah. it. But that's just me. 
because and i will talk about exactly it. it's you know? crazy the number of young girls it could be variety of reasons sometimes it's the choice of food it's a choice of lifestyle it's the stress that comes with it it usually happens when you know you're facing like you said some career progression sometimes it gets in the way mm. but it's unbelievable and it's not the it's not the only time i was asked a question like that doctor wow. number 3 who has been touch wood um <laughs> the one who's like you know been the the he conducts the examination the radiology examination himself okay he was the one who was like the calmest zero drama mm-hmm. and when i finally when he gave me a longer term solution and he said you can't live like this mm-hmm. forever mm-hmm. but at least for 2 to 5 years you can use mm-hmm. an inter- intrauterine inter- yeah. device mm-hmm. which is not relevant to pregnancy yeah oh the drama that came with that and trying to explain it to an insurance agent again female when i'm like um okay uh, oh mata kiyanna puluwang podi history ekak tiyenawa me case ekak gana hari mis mula indala kiyanna 2010 mokadda une aa etakota 2012 mokadda une aa hari etakota 2015 fibroid ekak tibba hari ආ ඒක හරි අයින් කරා හරි එතකොට ඒක දැන් ඇයි මිස් මේ මිරෙන කොයිල් එකක් දාන්නේ මේක අදාළ නැහැනේ ඔව් මයි ගෝ අදාළ නැහැනේ නෝ ඉඩියා සෝ අයින් ලයික් අ නෑ දැන් පේන් එක වැඩි වෙලා තියෙන්නේ ඒක හෙවි බ්ලීඩිං කියලා ඩොක්ටර්ම ලියලා තියෙන්නේ දැක්කේ නැද්ද නෝ බට් ද ෆැක්ට් දැට යු හැව් ටු එක්ස්ප්ලේන් ඕල් දිස් ටු ඇන් ඉන්ෂුරන්ස් ඇන් ඔන්සෝ රයිට් ඇන් ඇරන් බිස්නස් ටු ෆයින්ඩ් අවුට් ෂී හැව් ලයික් දිස් you know monthly things herself yeah and this is what she ended with the ignorance she ended with miss miss ge katandara mata piliganna ba that's what she ended with oh my gosh and i just remember i was in the stairway of my office building and i was shaking with rage just shaking Because with rage these are expensive uh, yeah, procedures options. right options to me yeah. how yeah. much did you have to spend on yourself um for the fibroid removal it was close to 3 lakhs for the mirena coil placement again it was a little less two and a half ish but it was it was easier to explain it to my male boss at the time than to kind of and this mirena coil placement what yeah. is that exactly so there are two types of intrauterine devices both of them regulate hormones okay one type of intrauterine device regulates the hormones that lead to pregnancy mm. This one regulates the balance of the, of the two or three hormones that are supposed Estrogen to be yeah whether mm. it's the cushion lining or the pcos or whatever but it doesn't last forever so i've had yeah. it now for 3 years mm. um, so you have not had a hysterectomy you've not taken no, your no but this mere and a call place and came because i went to doctor number 3 and i'm like can we just remove it <laughs> right so i'm like yeah just remove it it's okay no, i can't they, deal they with it they want anymore. you to have your children yeah at risk to yourself they think yeah honestly your prime reason for existence is your child bearing capacity when at the end of it when i i mean i also was given this option and i was like yes but this still goes on and on and on and on and yeah. finally i'm like get rid of it yeah um and i said there's adoption there's this there's that there's all the other things but uh, i mean at one point they said when i came in at the first thing mm, mm. then it was like ivf now ivf is freaking expensive yeah. you know my husband and i were both on government paid jobs at that point in time which is you know and i don't think ivf is covered by insurance yeah it there are it depends on i think now Who? there are certain insurance companies Not to that where we were when we were yeah, covered exactly. with what we were covered yeah. with yeah yeah and also it was like a 50 50% chance if you will conceive or not because the hostile environment mm. right i mean and at the end of my second thing i don't forget the doctor comes and says you must have been in so much pain and i said actually no because i learned lately shanaki that there's asymptomatic in oh. you cannot have any symptoms and still have it inside you which is like a really scary thought but this guy says you know when we open up and go in there and it's messy and you know there's mm. there, it has gone everywhere and adhered to all the other organs and you know urinary tract so and all that so that all the you know other problems also come in he said we used to call that 
tiger country when there's like you know you you were not like tiger country you were like afghanistan he tells me <laughs> i was like okay but mm. let's talk about the, this because i think it's important for families in sri lanka to know just because you have a hysterectomy if a female opts to uh, safeguard her health, health and take it away that doesn't take away her ability to be a mother, mother because you yeah. are a mother anyway yes. you may not have born yeah. the child but, but you were doctor exactly. and you and that's the i mean at that time i used to say oh you know what i mean the woman is not a breeding cow you know that's not your value but that doesn't mean there were times in the depression which comes with all of this hormone replacement mm. the depression the weight gain the mood swings so much so that i'm i used to think at some point is this me becoming a real harridan and a witch is it the hormone replacement therapy and the after effects what is this you know you begin to yeah. wonder at yourself so the mood swings are you whatever. saying that when you go into treatment only these things happen or is it before or at what point of um, time do you feel like well the the imbalance of hormones also yes. has you you your system goes haywire. it goes haywire right yeah and then they put you on medication to stop the menstruation and regulate that also it is inevitably i mean even for you know not getting pregnant you go on the pill exactly. now is on the pill for forever weight gain yeah you know appetite goes say so what what are the after effects you um so i was on the pill for about one and a half years mm. uh, before the mirena treatment uh, before the pill it was uh, an, in an injection yes i said which <laughs> was again weight gain uh, uh -huh. um after effects for me were the skin problems um and for me crazily enough like you know the, the there was always the facial hair uh, the unibrow um you know and it made so much of sense when doctor number 3 actually explained explains you know there's a li little bit more testosterone i'm like ah oh, that's why i get it now yes, exactly. right you're not mogli i'm not <laughs> you know something that's the other thing shanki i had the advantage with my first doctor of having a family friend okay. who had also been through similar situations she sat me down in her office and for about an hour she explained the whole history geography oh, everything wow. then we went into professor's office okay. and he said oh you have this da 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 this is what i right. suggest but he didn't take time to explain to me mm. in detail or answer my questions the way the other doctor had mm. but then i'd already had that prepping so okay. whenever i had a problem i could ask but most of our professionals see you yes you're a case here's the option here's the solution and your 5 minutes is up i have you another know, patient going up it's that's how they treat it yeah but now both of you i would say uh, like you know a lot of our friends colombo the privilege of oh, yes. access to doctors and facilities and maybe doctors who know what this is all yeah. about my mother having gone to one of the best of the best at that time the doctor herself didn't know what was going on with my mother and uh, wow uh, my mother never had a conversation in detail with me because the subjects of ovarian That's health the and thing. all that was never talked talk about, right? about so it's so i intimate. also didn't know about everything mm. that she went through yeah. until i started yeah. reading up about these things recently and then i was like why didn't she ever talk Probably. about these yeah. things why didn't i'm sure my father would have known or something but the fact that she kept those things to herself mm. because it's not but you, you think or, about but, you think about how the reproductive lesson is done in school <laughs> right <laughs> my science teacher closed the doors she was a married lady she closed the doors and in this hushed voice you know we all there right ah present on air today and you know she is like one of these <laughs> timid yeah so my brother say the 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 uh, master comes tamusla na none mega right let's go to the next lesson and another one of my old school <laughs> former schoolmates a few years younger teacher just skipped that lesson they skipped the lesson yeah. on reproduction Chapter so if they are teaching yeah. you about reproduction are they going to teach you about reproductive health yeah it's but you know, you know but what i was saying is like we have access to information yep. we have access to facilities what happens these, to those these problems are not limited to the colombo ladies who know exactly. what's going on with exactly. exactly and the websites are usually international websites yeah. what language are they in most of the time english, english. 
So where is the translated version? How do you name endometriosis or adenomyosis in a language like Sinhala or Tamil? And how many girls must be out there suffering. who still don't know why yeah. they're suffering? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, exactly. we have this thread with batchmates and a couple of days ago I was like after Shanuki Kanda. So look, give me, give me a minute of your time. Do you know what endometriosis is? I put in brackets, chocolate cyst. Have you or anyone you know been diagnosed with it? How many people? Most of the people who replied, yes, yes, two, three, ah, another one, four, yes, yes, not me, but you know, most of them knew. One auntie who responded said, didn't know what that was. Another auntie said, yeah, hysterectomy at 40, really bad suffering, da, da, da. And these are extremely educated, lawyer by profession, wealthy, all sorts of things. But like you said, no one in school ever talked about it. Yeah. No one now ever talks about it. I went and told, you know, and I told some parents of um, students, these children, they're the, like collapsing during period types. Mm. And I said, get her checked out. This is not normal. I lost the ability to have a child. Get this order. They don't go. They Do don't you think go. it's because they're scared of like her not... Uh, being uh, marriageable for instance i think it stems like if we go into like you know the the annals of history uh, in our culture um even the scan itself right Invasion. it is an intrusive device so then the whole yeah. angle of oh, also, also virginity, also virginity yeah. the the hymen it's the a whole lot of yes that too yes. right and but what the yeah, I mean, yeah. what the beep, beep. Yeah. What the exactly, fuck? right? But it's, <laughs> trust me, because I've spoken to kids as well and their parents and I've had to advise friends my age, this was in my early 20s, who had similar problems and sit with them while they tell their mothers or, mm. you know, family members, I have this issue, I need to go get it checked, I need to be on some kind of treatment. The It's one of the stigmas is that, like virginity, Equals. We have a I problem with people wearing tampons. They don't want you to wear tampons yeah. in case you're virgin. It's not about a hymen, for God's sake. Can we get that, you know, beyond first, that? First and it's not about a hymen. Yeah. Right? And the other thing is, I think we, you have to also remember that we are in Sri Lanka. And in this bubble that we are in and the, you know, access that we have, you will walk into a hospital and you might probably meet at least one other person no, who knows you. Who knows who knows you. you. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say, for example, I'm a female and I have a daughter who is in her early teens and she's going through, you know, some, something like what I went through in my early teens. I'm going to be like, oh, this one's that one, who is that one's neighbor is there and don't know what she'll tell. That's another problem. So we'd rather hypothetically drink a venue getter and just let Panadol, Brufen, Brufen, and the other one is a primo lactic gun. I have a pharmacy for the other one. Ponston. Ponston. No, also the fear factor. Now, I know this constant bleeding and whatever. I know I was like, if I go and get this checked out, what am I going to find? So you do the ostrich bit, you know, mm -hmm. you're just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kind of yeah. Thing. So, or if you can live with it, yeah. Yeah. if you can kind of exist and work around it, let's keep, let's not, let's not the status quo. Let's yeah. Big mistake because you're at least, and that's one of the big things they're saying is it's never caught in time. Yeah. And then it's then damage control that doctors and it's are doing gone past a certain point yeah. because between Dr. One who said, Wait until you mm. get married and that, you know, that, that's uh, between Dr. 1 and Dr. 2, there were these episodes of, you know, extreme pain and collapsing and I think in between there was a DNC procedure to kind of clear ah, whatever okay. endometriosis was there so that it would never come back again, but it did. Um, in between, there was this one day I still recall where I, when I, when I realized, you know, I this can't deal with it. Um, there was zero, there was no one at home. Um, I think I was teaching at the time, so it was a school holiday um, and everyone was out for an extended period of time and that's the day that the cramps decided to hit.
Oh. Um, so where I where I was sleeping, let's say, is here, and the medicine cabinet is where you are, Sam. And you couldn't get from there to here. And I just couldn't get from there to the medicine cabinet to even get that Panadol out. It was unbelievable the pain, and and that's when I realized I I really. Don't think I can do mm. this. If mm. I was, it was a working day, and I had the chance oh to, you know, what would I do? If I'm in a space where I've got to, you know, attend to this, who do I tell? Can you talk me through what was the aftercare and the post surgery and the post treatment like? Like, what did you all have to do? What did you all have to go through? Uh, how long did you have to say recover? Okay, so I so I've had three uh, procedures. Uh, the first one was the DNC, like I said, the clearing. Cleaning up. Cleaning like up. Like DMMC. Yeah. Municipal yeah. Council. Municipal Council. Council. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> yeah, no, but true, right? DNC. <laughs> and you think in your mind, oh, everything will be okay. Uh, so DNC was done in the morning. Um, it was a day surgery. Um, I was working at uh, part. I was working part time at a radio station at the at the time, and I went in for my shift in the. Evening. After the afternoon, and you were okay. I was not okay. okay. I was in pain because it's D for dilation and C for curative scraping. You're yes. basically scraping the womb. So what the <laughs> Wilbur is very uncomfortable at this point. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, darling. We won't go there. <laughs> yeah. But you know, so you just say like, ah, D and C, D and C, right? So they just you wake up out of the anesthesia. At least I, that's what I did. And they were like. Ah, Mr. Then wash color, get the other pillow. I'm like, huh? Okay, <laughs> cool. You were alone. I was not alone for okay, that procedure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, okay, get the other pillow. Yes. And, and I you're just, like, yeah, yeah, right. And I'm like, okay, I have a shift. I can do the shift. You know. Come and then by <laughs> like nine in the night, I'm just oh like, gosh. somebody kill me now, right? That was the first procedure. The second one was the removal of the fibroid um, myomectomy. Um, and because it was a cut, and because it had to be stitched, uh, it got categorized as major, major surgery, surgery, which means at least to two weeks of um, mm. time to recuperate. Uh, but there were lots of things that I had to be aware of, like I couldn't wear the pants that I liked because there's your your stomach area, your lower abdomen, mm -hmm. abdomen is swollen, so you've got to kind of you know be conscious of that. There's a cut. You need to have like plaster like and cesarean whatever cesarean kind of mm -hmm. thing. And the thing is, with the cesarean cut, and if you've uh, the re whatever I've read up at least, um, when you deliver a child, your body has is giving you healing powers to make the process happen quicker. There was nuts. a no baby that came out. It was just one big fibroid. So you mm -hmm. know, it's not going to be the same kind of process. Uh, procedure number three was uh, three days because again it wasn't a cut; it was you know placement through a laparoscopy, um, and but it was a lot of things to get used to because your body is balancing. My body was balancing hormones for the first time in at that time 31 years, um, and then of course also the fact that. Over a period of time, the menstrual cycle, the periods actually stopped. Like aduna, aduna, aduna. Okay. Menopause. Yeah, yeah. Because there's no other way to control the lining. So yes. this gadget, technically, it's tiny, but mm. it ensures that there's no mattress cushioning, whatever, so that there's nothing to deposit. Yeah. So that there's nothing to form a fibroid. And how are you a... now? Good. I there are still side effects though. Um, there is the perspiration issue. Um, Mowgli hangs around a bit. <laughs> the <laughs> facial, facial hair, hair. Okay. and it's crazy though. But because it, it's localized, it's like you know in certain areas. Okay. okay. Mm. Um, and uh, was not far away from. <laughs> So there's uh, so there are good things as well though okay. um, you know there's a, a spike in energy that I've noticed over the mm. last three years. What <laughs> were your post surgical huh. things with the hysterectomy and everything? So, so pretty much where you were, but then the menopause brought on by the medication. So I can remember sitting in the staff room in the sari. Sweat pouring, hot flash, fair yeah. yeah. <laughs> parking papers, thinking oh, I want breeze, you know. That was not funny. Um, 
and like I said, you know, the weight gain, the mood swing, the, the tiredness, the you know, and uh, it, then and, and that just affects everything else in your life, your relationships, this that. How long did you have to uh, recover? After? It was like you said, major surgery. So the first. Uh, the, the two actual surgeries, I was in hospital for about three or four days, sent home and then had to have that couple of weeks mm. at least with this. And friends who had gone through also said, you know, be careful, the sitting, the standing, the lifting, mm. the even pushing things. You know how we, we use our hips and our back yeah. to push things and don't push, don't lift, don't carry, don't, the way you bend. Uh, and I'm, I've never been a patient mm -hmm. like that. So like okay. hospital and bed and I was like, uh, but I mean, now there is no effect like that, that, but I think there is lingering, okay. you know, but uh, I actually got off the medication maybe about three years before he wanted me to, I said, can't I stop this? He says, no. Why did you want to There's stop? There's a risk of cancer. I, I wanted to stop because on the hormone treatment, these are the, the whole mood swings. And so you wanted to stop I wanted that. to stop all that. I thought, okay, now I've got rid of the wound. No. So if you stop, there's a risk of cancer. There's a risk of cancer because a lot of, apparently, a lot of the, there's a big percentage of uh, cancer patients involved in the endo mm. related this thing. So, I mean, Professor said, look, you can stop. These are your dangers. You continue. These are your dangers. And I thought, I don't want to end up with cancer. I mean, you know, so I continued for a few years, but then I sort of phased it out. But by that time, I had roughly a decade on, you know, this kind of HRT and the whole thing. So are you OK now? I have no physical issues and whatever, you know, now I'm just dealing with how my life changed mm. because those things happened to me. Right. You know, yeah. and of course, like I said, you went through that whole, you know, I mean, I, I still sort of see a pregnant woman and think I would have liked to have experienced that if we had been taught this should be a necessary part of, you know, I, I think folic acid and endometriosis and these kinds of things. Why are we not being taught? Yeah. This is how to be, you know, I learned about folic acid and when I did a advertising campaign about the disasters that happen to your children if you don't have adequate folic acid and I was freaked out and I'm thinking what's we why are we, we not yeah. we have no idea you know and all these doctors why are they not getting into schools so maybe now that since two, mm. 2019 they've started this I don't know you know, how much the reach is. But I think finally, it's a shame that it's more individuals talking yeah. or one group of doctors getting together and starting this. Why is it not part of a syllabus in school? If you can talk about sexually transmitted disease, why not this? this do they even talk about that? Well, yeah, they don't do the reproductive <laughs> systems. <or what? laughs> yes. Now, you've me. written something about this. Yeah, I've written a few things. Yes. Let's hear your poetry. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll, I'll share with you two. Um, so one was, one is called Divided, Retroverted Uterus. Um, written 9th November 2014. Today they told me that my womb is divided, that my ovaries are polycystic, that it is a very rare condition, and that having a child will be a struggle. I wanted to laugh because in the same breath they told me not to worry, that it could take place. I just need to be very careful and very positive. So a benign growth was the least of my concerns. I wanted to laugh because beating an abnormal spinal curvature, a rotated hip shaft, four impacted wisdom teeth and chronic asthma were nothing compared to this. I wanted to laugh because the girl on stage who sang and danced would maybe, just maybe, be unable to teach her own girl to dance and sing. Mm -hmm. And yet I remain divided between laughter and tears. That's one. Mm -hmm. um, the other one was a couple of uh, 
weeks after my uh, myomectomy, the fibroid removal surgery, I called it scar. One scalpel slice that changed the course of history, that lays seven years of effort to a sordid rest. Waking up from the anesthesia, she wondered why they made her move her entire body single-handedly from stretcher to bed. Throat too dry to even sound the pain she felt as she tried to move, she managed a groan. Bright lights, faces familiar, smiles and laughter, feeble steps against the pain, some unsightliness, and two days later, release. She wrote an exam paper that same week, and when they removed the plaster, all she could do was cry. Not because she felt ugly, but something within her told her that life had changed forever. Hormones, 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 a raging sea, pain, 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 intense pain, unending claws, tears, hormones, pain, rewind, replay, day one, day two, week one, week two. And in the midst of it all, an incomprehension, Futures altered, vision or the lack of it too brutal, but present. And singing and dancing and feasting, all these were possible. In the mirror, she traces the shaky line, an almost imperceptible grin, made with a single scalpel slice, mocking the forever that it changed. If you have a story about your reproductive health. I think it's important for more women to speak. You can do so even anonymously if you don't want to put a name to it. Please uh, get onto our blog and share your story. It is so important for other girls out there who don't have the comfort of friends and family to talk to openly, to at least know that there is someone out there who has gone through what she is going through. And that's why these two ladies are here. This is something I got for a theatre production a long time ago. That's and from, for some uh, reason, Beth? yes, for some reason, I thought this is so symbolic. This condition was like a sword. You know that sword of Democles hanging mm. over your head? It's like a sword over your head. You know? And the faster you get rid of that, the better. And honestly, being open and factual and understanding that babies or no babies, you are worth and you are enough needs to get out there big time.